Welcome to Radul Live. Guys, thanks for joining us. We are a little bit late, and I'll tell you why in just a bit. First, I want to introduce to you uh, Nicholas Muyoti. You are current uh, uh, Kakamega Homeboys coach, former AFC Leopards player, former international, also the founding member of the Kenya Footballers Welfare Association. How are you doing? Okay. How has this COVID been taking you? And it's completely disrupted our lives. Eh? Yes, completely yes. disrupted our lives. I also want to introduce to you uh, Bramwell Karamoja. Yes. Uh, former Gormahia player. Yes. Host of Tuchapiane. Samiti FC player. Jazz Study CEO. <laughs> Uh, and the reason we have uh, Bram here, of course, we're supposed to have Wesley Onguso, who is uh, a player, a striker at uh, Nairobi City Stars. But uh, unfortunately, Wesley sent a message about an hour ago, a text message saying uh, something has come up and he cannot make it. And uh, that's really, really unfortunate because I spoke to him at 10 a.m. this morning and he said he was coming. And the reason I wanted him on the show today, because he's a player who's actually taken his welfare in his, into his own hands, yeah. which is something uh, we want to discuss this afternoon, all about player welfare. Um, so uh, Bram has just stepped in. I've been ambushed, literally. <laughs> <laughs> but since he's been campaigning for a comeback to football, to play for Kakamega Homeboys, maybe this is his chance <laughs> to speak to Muyoti. <laughs> but Bram, thanks for checking in. But guys, just very quickly, I'm really disappointed in the fact that uh, Wesley can't come. Um, he did say in his text that it was an emergency. Maybe it is. But within 30 seconds, you send a message and switch your phone off. I find it very suspicious, and I can't help but think that uh, somebody saw us advertising the show and told him not to come. What are the odds that happened? Um, I don't know if you'll go first or you want me to go first? You can go first, Brown. I think I've been, uh, I've been in, in, in that position before uh, because uh, I happen to be doing uh, almost the same thing that you're doing. And um, I've, been, I've also received calls uh, for my panelists uh, before. Uh, you'll find that you've, you invite a player or you invite someone to, to interview and then they tell you that they can't come because something has come up. Um, it's very unfortunate because I don't know how we are going to fix the game. Um, the other day I, in, uh, I interviewed some Starlet's players and I can't, I can't mention names but I was called. I was literally called by the powers that be and uh, I think now they've even changed the protocol that if you want to interview um, a player in, say, the, the Starlets team or the national team, Arambe Stars, you have to go through the federation and they have to get a permit or permission. So basically, interviewed. players are being stifled from speaking. Yeah. And if you're an active player, you fear, of course, for your position. Yeah. And uh, you have to listen to the powers that be. I'm not <laughs> saying that that's what happened. It's just really suspicious that... I spoke to Wesley this morning. He said, everything is order. I'll be there. In order, I'll be there. And then you send me a text and your phone goes off. Pop! Immediately. Mm. Nicholas, do you want to comment or we move on? <laughs> well, let's, let's move you, on. You're, you're also still in the game. Doubt, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be politically <laughs> correct. No, because I think also uh, clubs have different rules and regulations. Maybe mm. an official saw it or something might have happened. Mm. But let's just give it benefit of doubt. But, but, I, but I wish, you know, when we ask you, when we invite you to these shows, by all means, consult everybody, you know? Consult. I can't just do an interview without consulting certain people that can I go on this platform and talk about this issue. So um, I guess that's a bit of a player education that we can, uh, uh, that somebody needs to get into. That uh, You don't have to give me an answer now. Say I need to speak to my coach. I need to get clearance from the owner of my club. Speaking of uh, permissions and, uh, and, and, and writing even letters, I've, I've, I've had to, there, 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 are, there are situations where I've had to even do emails for, for some of my guests, the guests on the shows. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's always good to, if you're representing, because when you're coming to the interview, you're also representing a club, which is also a brand on its own. Yeah. So it's, all, it's also, also good to, to seek permission from, if it's your head coach, if it's the CEO, if it's the manager, they, they need to be aware because I've had situations where I've had to do emails emails to clubs mm -hmm. to get permission to interview some players. So, so um, I have a comment here from uh, Ochi is, uh, is uh, saying that he, uh, these players at times Sijui wanataka wasaidiwe aje, Onguso goes missing Ochi Weida Ochi Weida Ochi Weida, he's a friend of yours I know he says then his phone goes off Obimbo Wodochien, cartel at work 
uh, Boaz, these players at times, how will we help them? Um, and then, okay, this is a friend, a friendish of Brahms. It's Ngesti Dies Dungamata. Eh, Bram anajua kizungu. Omera. Yes, because he's too champiano in Kiswahili. Yeah, I speak English sometimes. Let's move on with the show regardless. And I want to start with you, Muyoti. I've known you for, I think, more than 10 years. When we first met face to face, I knew you by player. It was almost 10 years ago. You, I think you were captain of AFC Leopards at the time, and I was working for Supersport. Yeah. So we used to interview captains after the show. Yeah. But just take us very briefly through your career, both as a player and up to um, why you thought it important to form a, a, feder um, a welfare association. Okay, thanks. Huh? Um, yeah, my story is quite long, because uh, basically my journey has been that long. But uh, maybe I'll just try to keep it as short as possible. Mm -hmm. I started playing uh, in high school, and uh, professionally, I played uh, from Form 3, that is at Kenyatta Hospital. That is where I started my career as a footballer. And uh, by the time I was finishing high school, um, I joined FC Leopards, that is in 97. And then uh, basically I went through the ranks. It wasn't easy at that time, I tell you, to get even a jersey to play, because at that time there were very, very many good players. Remember the likes of uh, Kinamulama, Makacha, mm -hmm. um, Hassan Sisi, mm -hmm. James Kaimba, Gripa Nyanje, we had a very good squad at that time, mm -hmm. and making it through wasn't easy. But uh, I, I, I accepted the challenge, and uh, getting into the team wasn't easy, but I finally made it. Why? Because um, I thought, for me, I, I needed to work hard, because most of those players were very talented, man. Yeah. Just breaking in, in, in the ranks was not easy. But I really worked hard, and I made it through. By the time uh, we were winning the league in 98, I was very firmly in the team. And uh, yeah, we moved on from there. I played for Leopards uh, till 2001. And then uh, that's when after then I moved to Thika United. Um, just, sorry, if you could stop a bit. If our yeah. production team can just get you another microphone. I can see there are many comments here. People uh, can't hear you properly. Uh, so we're just going to get you another handheld mic so that we can continue in the show. Yeah. In the meantime, and I'll come back to you since Bram's mic is okay. Mm. Maybe Bram, you are a player. You're somebody who has been through yeah. um, uh, the challenges of playing in the Kenyan Premier League. Yeah. So maybe you can take us through your journey while we wait for uh, Muyoti to get a handheld mic. Just leave it there. They'll just get you another okay. one. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, my name is uh, Bramwell, Bramwell Karamoja, and uh, I'm a former player. Still want to come back to the game. <laughs> Stop um, campaigning with me, <laughs> um, My football journey is quite long as well. I've played for so many teams. I've played in all the leagues. I've played in the nationwide. I've played in the, I've played in the Premier League. I've played college football. So basically, I started my football way back in Kakamega. I used to play for a team called Amalemba Sportive. And then that was before I moved to Nairobi. Um, and then I came to Nairobi. I joined MISA, the MISA system. I played for the Madare Youth Sports Association, the under 15s, under 16s, under 17, um, um, all the way up to under 20s. And then uh, after that, of course, I used to stay in Gara. I joined uh, a team called Ngara Youth Peliko, where I played for about two seasons before Gormaya came up for me. So um, before I joined Gormaya, I, I had told myself one thing. I, I said to myself that if it's not Gormaya of, or FC Leopards, then I'm not playing the Premier League. So by the time F, uh, Gormaya came for me, Gormaya actually poached me as a defender, but I ended up playing as an offensive player in the team because we had so many talented uh, defenders at that time. We had Lloyd Wahome, we had Julius Owino, who is uh, a willow, we had Alfred Chege, uh, all competing for the same position. So yeah, I joined Gurmaya in 2006, all the way up until 2009. And that is my journey. All right, we'll get into your challenges, I think, uh, uh, in just a bit, because that's what we want to discuss today, the yeah. challenges that uh, our footballers go through. Nick, you were still going through your story. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I okay. hope your mic is uh, better than uh, people here. Uh. Titus Mulama, it was always a battle with midf in midfield with Nico. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then they want your volume up. We've changed his microphone. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Somebody here says, I'm locked from Bond. Or Michael R. Mutesh, Nicholas Moyoti was a quality player and a good captain. Uh, most people were asking for your vo for your uh, volume to be raised, but yeah, people remember you fondly as a player. Do you miss your playing days? Yes, I do. You do. Yeah, very much, very much. 
Yeah. I don't miss Waze playing anywhere. They call me. I'll go, I'll go there and play. It's <laughs> in me. <laughs> you went some it's in December. <laughs> Apparently, I had polis and I couldn't attend it. Oh, you didn't it. make it? Didn't come yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I had a, to a tournament somewhere else. Yeah. But, but thank you, you, you used to have uh, dreadlocks before, right? Yes, yes, I did, yeah. I did, I did. When I used to interview you on the gonna, touchline, you had dreadlocks. I'm going to come to that. I'm going to come to that. Your strength was in your dreadlocks. I'm Nowadays, you can't play. That. You don't have to be dread to be rasta. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so you were taking us, uh, and then I think, where had you reached? Uh, you were playing for AFC Leopards as yes, captain? Yes, yes, yes. I had uh, moved to mm -hmm. AFC Leopards, and I think, uh, yeah, it was a big challenge for me to make it. I can say, but finally I made it, and I rose till I became the captain of the team. Mm -hmm. um, that is uh, after, that is uh, just the end of two, uh, 1999. I became the captain and then uh, we moved on. We, we, we played uh, the Moy Golden Cup finals uh, against Madari. They beat us 2-0. And then the following year, we beat Madari in the final again. We beat them 2-0 we beat them two zero after them beating us. But something happened uh, before the f first final we played against Madari. Um, I think I was told from the semi-final uh, that I couldn't make it the squad. I was a captain and I was told, you can't make it to the squad. Mm -hmm. And uh, asking why, I was told uh, the message has come from I don't know who, mm -hmm. that I can't make it to the squad. So I was omitted in the final and in the semi-final. And uh, from the first minute of the final against Madari, I was warming up and I warmed up the whole game. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> How, how can these guys do this to me? I'm the captain of the team. Hey. And uh, something funny and something that came out of it, something which was very good, is that I had to stay at Leopards to make sure the following year I get to the final and win it. I mean, I took that challenge very positively. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, maybe if it was another person, you would have been complaining and you're yeah, whining about it. But I say to myself, if these guys can do this to me, I'm going to fight it out. So yeah. it was a battle for me. The following year, we made it to the final and we beat the same Madari 2 0 at Nyayo Stadium. And then, uh, yeah, this was basically the highlight of my career at FC Leopards as a captain. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, uh, I moved to Thika United. Um, my, end, my ending days at Leopards, I think I was called to the national team under 23. Um, that was in uh, 2001. We were going to, to have a tournament in Qatar. So apparently the tournament was cancelled after us playing for one, uh, after us training for one week. So the tournament was cancelled and we were told we were supposed to go home. But before that, Fabish was a national team coach and he requested for a friendly match with the, with the senior team. Mm. So we played the friendly match at uh, City Stadium and uh, that is when I was called to the, to the senior national team. Right. That is uh, 2001. Yeah. So basically, um, after that, I, yes, I moved to Thika from Leopards. And uh, yeah, I think I was also good. I think I had people who there believed in me so much. And uh, yeah, the challenges I'd faced at Leopards, maybe we'll come to that. Mm -hmm. um, they were not easy at that time because uh, when I got there, it was good. But as time went by, things got bad. And uh, really, I had to move because uh, I couldn't. Uh, at that time, I have a young family and uh, there were bills to take care of. So it was very difficult to hang in there. But I really hung in there. And uh, I remember after winning the league, we thought we were going to be given uh, at least some, some little money, a mm. uh, token of appreciation. But something funny is that that money was used to sign other players. And we were like, what, what the hell is this? We worked all throughout the year. Mm. We are winning the league and this money is being used to sign other players. Mm. And at that time, we were going for Eastern Central in uh, Uganda and we were in camp. So we are just hearing the, the, the names being signed in. These are the players coming, kina Tom Juma coming, kina Waweru, George Waweru, kina um, Zablona Manaka. We're just hearing the names, kina Victor Nyango. And we were like, hey, haya, kumbe tuliko tunapigani ya watu ndo wakuje kwa team. Eh? You know, so it was, it, it, was, it, was, it was really bad at that time and very demoralizing. Mm. But we said, this is our career, so we just have to move on. So we went to Eastern Central. We didn't do it apparently because the team wasn't uh, together and we were not training together. Just many other players had come in. And of course, it needed time to, to do the cohesion. So uh, I think that is a bit that I'll never forget till today. Mm. That we won the league and uh, we were never given a token of appreciation. Mm. I hope uh, today we are not facing the same situation. Apparently, even bigger because today the league has no sponsor. 
the, 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 the situation has barely changed. Yeah. In fact, I think it's actually got a little bit worse. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, Bram, you want to tell us? Uh, the, the token of appreciation, I think, uh, the other day you were reading in the news that even Gormaya are still uh, yet to be paid for winning the league uh, last season, I think. So I don't think the anything The situation is still bad. In fact, it, even just, it gets worse. When there are no sponsors and then they keep using that, that as an 98. excuse. <laughs> Paka now. Yeah, I Bram, think you just <laughs> just a few comments, and then Bram, yeah. I'll come and ask about your challenges as a player. Mm. Um, I don't know why people want to know why Muyoti cut his hair. <laughs> Somebody else says, oh, "Wait, where's that comment gone?" Thomas Wanjala, why did Muyoti shave his dreadlocks? <laughs> <laughs> I said I'll come to that. You, you, you'll come to <laughs> it's that. It's part of the challenge. Before the show. Uh, yes, oh, yes. it's part of the challenges. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Kila B says, uh, I think threats and intimidation is something being used by those in power across all disciplines in the 254. It'll be hard for, uh, yeah, Wanyonge to voice up. Yeah, it's <laughs> tricky. It's a tricky situation. Um, people tuned in from Eldoret, uh, veteran Namiero watching from Doha. He says, Muyoti is his mentor. Um, Almago Raul says, Salimia Muyoti Sana, my best captain coach at AFC Leopards. Much respect. Wamahiga Wama Njega says, Muyoti was the face of Ingwe back then. And then he also asked, which other teams did Bram play for? I don't know why they think everybody needs a long <laughs> list of teams. <laughs> Out of 200 comments, yeah. there's one about Bramwell. <laughs> Bram, there are many from me for you. Most are amused that you're speaking in English. Okay. Yeah, most are amused that you're speaking in English. But the fact is, your career was short. Yes. As an active player. And that actually brings us to issues of welfare. Because if yes. your welfare was looked after, you probably would have stayed with football. What were some of the challenges you went through? Before I come to the challenges, and I think you've, uh, you've, you've said it, um, I think I, I, I stopped playing football when I was supposed to have started playing football. Mm -hmm. You know, a player's uh, prime time for playing is at the age of about 23 to 27. Yes. And that is apparently almost the same time that I left the country to look for greener pastures, in yeah. quotes. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, I played, I, uh, when I joined God Maya, I think I was about 22, 22 Yaukweli, those who are watching. <laughs> <laughs> I was 22 of Yaukweli, not th th that one of, <laughs> of Europe, <laughs> 22 not of, of Europe. Africa. <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was still a, a very young chap, um, and then, uh, you know, the frustrations of life, you need to balance between uh, football and paying rent, paying yeah. bills, and uh, my background, I come from a family that believes in reading, mm -hmm. knowledge, education. They believe that you have to be a doctor, you have to be a pilot, you have to be you know, a teacher to, to earn a living. So it was a bit difficult for me because my parents and my sisters, you know, my siblings, uh, they, they used to push me away from football more than encouraging me to play, even though I come from a football background. But you almost can't blame them because that is where you get your sure paycheck, sadly in Kenya. Mm -hmm. That's where you get a sure paycheck. From a normal job in quotes. Sorry, I, if, I was if, just commenting. If you know, you know, football is is a game of it's 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 a gamble. You can decide to take the path of football, and I can tell you for a fact, um, I'm I'm very lucky because uh, as I've told you, I come from a football background. Uh, for those who know uh, Jonathan Niva, Jonathan Niva is actually my brother's dad, my dad's brother, whichever comes dad's first, brother. my dad's brother. <laughs> Brother, that is your dad. <laughs> yeah, so Jonathan Niva is actually my dad. So um, when I was in high school, he actually tried to, you know, hold my hand and made sure that, that I, I pursued football as a career. That's why, you see, in my, in my CV, I have Misa, because it, uh, by that time, he was the Madara United head coach. So when I finished high school, unfortunately, Jonathan Niva passed away. So to me, my candle was, you know, it was... Diminished. That's the correct word. Ilizimwa. <laughs> <laughs> My candle was Zimwa. That speaks for English. Satisfy your fans. That speaks for English. My candle was Zimwa at that time. So it was very difficult for me. And then I think my dad, you know, at that time he had given up uh, about football. So it was challenging. If I had pursued football as a career at that time, I can guarantee you for a fact I'll be in Europe right now because I'm still in my prime. Right now, I, my team, my, my peers to speak are still playing competitively in, in, in the Kenyan Premier League. Some are in Europe, some 
in the lower leagues how oh, jani convince bado tell, tell us i'm not saying you are. <laughs> no tell us because i want to come to the issue about what footballers used to go through yeah and i had you even telling this story on your show to chapiane yeah about walking from ngara to city stadium <laughs> getting the, mugged the challenges were the challenge was were too many uh, I, as you've said i used to live uh, in ngara and we used to train at city stadium so what i used to do i used to walk from ngara cut through uh, gikomba all the way to city stadium every day and sometimes you used to train two to train two times uh, a day you train in the morning you train in the evening so you walk in the morning you walk back home by the time you reach home it's again training time so you have to walk back again um this was basically because uh, there was not pay for for us we used to play just for the badge um, um the only things we used to to get were allowances and that allowance used to be the fare sometimes we used to go for games at uh, at sony sugar those days we used to play two matches a weekend mm -hmm. you play on saturday you play on sunday so you play sony on saturday you play uh uh, which other team comes was from that telecom, region? Telecom. No, 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 no. Mumias, no. This team Sony. that was disbanded, Mi, not Moroni. Moroni youth. So you play, you play at Sony, yeah. then you go to Moroni or uh, Chemilil. Chemo, yeah. You come back. Probably uh, it used to be way past mid midnight. Sometimes we arrive in Nairobi at 4 a.m. You're given 70 bob. Our team manager used to be Chris Darling. So Chris is given 70 bob for every player. Mm -hmm. That time, fair alone. To your place is hundred bob. Mm. So this <laughs> nothing about it, but these are the challenges that yeah. our footballers go through, and then you had to get odd jobs as well. Yes, because um, at the end of the day, you still have bills. Yes, yes, um, yes. I used to work as a, as a cyber attendant. Mm -hmm. Actually, that is the reason why maybe I even stopped playing football because uh, my 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 job at uh, at the cyber cafe used to give me six thousand bob those days, and uh, at Gormaya. Hardly, I will get even 3,000 bob. So at some point, I, 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 I had a decision to make. Go ahead with uh, playing football, earn 3,000, or take the 6,000. So I took yeah. the 6,000. Mm -hmm. So I, used to, I also used to sell CDs for survival. Mm -hmm. So after, after work in the evening, I go burn my CDs. It was piracy. Mm -hmm. It's illegal, but I used to do it to just to survive. It. And then um, at Gormaya also, I used to have a small camera, go in there, you know, take the players' photos, come sell it to them. Kina Awilo, Kina Kanute. You know, I used to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so eventually, um, uh, sorry that I know your story so well. <laughs> eventually, you had to go and seek greener pastures, and the football career ended prematurely. But yeah. it's good, Bram, that you're back in a different way. Yeah. Muyoti, what are some of the challenges? Okay, the, let me just read this comment first from Alan Wanga. CR, kindly tell a boy from Samitsi to just use Luya, we'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> Serious matters. What are some of the challenges you went through as a player um, that made you decide now is the time to form a players' association? I think, yeah, first of all, before I get to that, I think I'll answer about my dreadlocks. Eh? <laughs> um, yeah, it was in 99, um, um, Matano approached me. At that time, he was coach of Kenya Railways. And uh, at the height of our problems at Leopards, he told me that uh, if I play for them uh, during Kekoso games, I'd have a chance to get employment there. And that is what happened. I joined uh, railways preparing for Kekoso. I made it to the team that went to Kisumu for Kekoso games. And that is where we played. After that, I was given a job at railways. So that's when I had to cut my dreadlocks. Because I was told, I was going to work in the manual. I was going to work in the So I took up the challenge and then... Uh, yeah, from there I was in Leopards and at least getting something at Railways, which really pushed me. And then, uh, yeah, after a year, that's when I moved to Thika. Um, coming to the challenges, that's the first time I shaved my dreadlocks. Because I grew them again. Uh, okay. Yes, you did. And I cut them again. Now they're growing inside. <laughs> <laughs> I think he doesn't mean physically. I think he means in the heart. <laughs> You don't have to be glad to be Rasta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just on a, just a yeah. small correction, Bram, from the encyclopedia, Kekeroi. Ke uh. He says, Bram, Buana, Muhoroni Youth was in KPL in 2010. That time fixtures were one a weekend. So you used to play Shabana and Chemo or Sony and on Zoya, Pipeline, Mumias. Encyclopedia, thank you very much for Muhoroni that correction. Muhoroni was in the league those days. Uh, at the bot bottom, not at the top. Team up, Ukochi. 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 
kulikuwa anyway, kulikuwa na agro fact is, agro ah agro. thank you keke that's that's why you're my boy keke is an encyclopedia agro chemical so let's get into the mm, yeah. I want to get into the serious matters yeah. of why the association why the fed why the welfare association was yes. formed okay now um after that i moved uh, to thika united eh? mm -hmm. and this is where um i got an opportunity also to go outside the country um i went to singapore in 2006 i I, then I went to India, and then after getting an injury, I came back to Kenya. Now, um, coming back to Kenya, and that is Thika United, um, I met James Omondi and, uh, of course, other players, but uh, he was the one I was interacting with. And this is where we, we, we now started talking about the, the union of players. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, this came up, and it was very serious. And uh, at then, by then, we wanted to start up something about uh, the welfare. But we said, uh, let us wait a bit and see what happens, then we'll do it. Then um, I came back and then I joined uh, Sofa Paka. No, before Sofa Paka, I joined Karuturi Sports in Ivasha. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to Sofa Paka. Mm -hmm. And then my last team, FC Leopards. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where in 2011, um, KPL organized a symposium for players. Mm -hmm. um, and we came at the symposium. And uh, they talked to us about uh, the, uh, the the welfare of the players and stuff. So after the meeting, yeah, we are there. Everybody saying, "Hey, lazima transition association. We have to start manze. Imefika time nini nini nini." And then everybody went away. So I was like, "Now it just hit me. This is the time to to do this thing. This is the time to start an association because mm. uh, we've seen what players are going through yeah. and uh, basically issues about contract." Uh, termination of contracts, issues about uh, the players' welfare, the being uh, the contracts being honoured. I mean, this was something that uh, was very rampant. Our contracts were not being honoured. Is it the same time that uh, that this Gurmaya player called uh, Solomon Nasio had a very nasty injury and then Gurmaya just neglected it him? It was later That was on. a few years later. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a few years All later. Right. Yeah. I remember you came to see me, I don't know if it was 2009 or 2010, yeah. you were with uh, Xavier yeah. and uh, Omondi mm -hmm. and you were telling me about the association. I think yeah. you wanted me to be a patron. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but during my show, there's someone who said that you are one of the finding, founding members of... Uh, they came to see me. <laughs> we had several meetings. We, we had are, several we meetings. Getting there. Because, right. getting there. because right. even simple things like registration was a struggle. Yes. Mm. Because the powers that be don't want mm -hmm. the people you subject to have power to have power. Yeah. Mm. So anybody would try and stifle an association where players had rights, yeah. which is very unfortunate. Radu, so even in trying there. to get registration. She's coming in. Right. <laughs> so here we are. My scene has mm. not arrived. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Here we are. We yeah. sat down and I said to myself, now we have we have to do this. So I called up all the players, mm. most of the players in KPL, especially the captains. Mm. I called quite a number of them and uh, we had a meeting at Bagadom. And out of uh, the, all the players called, I'd called over 50, 13 players came. 13 players here in town, Bagadom. That's where we sat. I'd organized a meal for them, and then, uh, yes, told them what, what it was about. I told them we are starting this welfare organization. So, guys, we need to sit down, we do the constitution, we do interim officials, and then we go for registration. So, we started that process. Already, it's a bit of a disappointment that you call players for an association that will benefit them, yeah. and 13 out of 15 respond. And it is out a, of over 50. Out of over 50, mm. sorry, yes. respond. Mm. Yeah. Because it's really difficult for people like me, who's an outsider, yeah. to try and fight for your rights mm -hmm. when you yourself, as an insider, yeah. mm. I don't know if we, be, we, we, are, we are selfish people by nature, or I don't know what it is. That is the same comment. It's, it's, I think it's the same comment I received after my interview with the Starlets, yeah. that uh, someone even commented and said, at this point, we're not going to be helping you guys because mm -hmm. when help comes, then you guys are not ready to speak up. Yeah. Because if it is change you want, it has mm -hmm. to start with you first, then it goes on the outside, not Definitely. the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, you said you, you, a so few yeah, players. We, yeah, a few players came. We started that process mm -hmm. and uh, we did our meetings, uh, consulting about the constitution and stuff, blah, 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 until we reached a point we were only now three 
it was me James Omondi and Willis Wailiaula now yes, moving because we had moved until it reached a point that uh, now players were not coming those who we started with the 13 no we were the 12 disciples of Jesus plus me I was now the Jesus now we remain the three he doesn't mean that literally yes, on social yes. media people start <laughs> 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 uh, yeah so we remain three and we got the constitution right and everything and then uh, this is where now the problem started we are taking our papers to the registrar and uh, they are not accepting the papers mm. they're just telling us different stories do this do this do this now we thought to ourselves what are we going to do ah. someone came with up with the idea kuna radula ko kwa sports mm. anajuana huku na huku anaweza kichukua anaweza tusaidia she has a big mm. mouth you know <laughs> kidogo mwingine akasema godon watch now mm. how do we get to this godon watch you know godon watch eventually i called godon for you guys godon mm. was a good guy at times sasa <laughs> mm. from her to godon to a letter from godon this is how we got to the registration which is unfortunate that you have to know somebody to know somebody to know somebody yes for work to be done, to be done. that is simple yes. there are people whose job it is to register yeah. such associations mm-hmm. um I, f- I remember even getting fkf <laughs> to approve yeah. was a bit of a challenge yeah, it was a challenge, it was uh, a challenge. eventually it happened yeah. th- it was I nyamwe think, at the uh, time yeah, eh? that time it was nyamwe and the willis waliaula helped us so much because mm. we are trying to go to the office this guy cannot see us but I will on you his joints yeah so one evening he just told us you're gonna get this guy here in a certain joint somewhere in in lovington i don't know where yeah so we had to do it that evening we prepared ourselves we went there with our papers mm. with us pap <laughs> we are there he's there with his buddies they are doing their stuff mzee tunataka kukuona kwa nest yake now he, he, he never wanted people to disturb him you know when he's busy there and if jana stunini hello kuja kuja hawe unataka nini eh ni mambo ya welfare wachezaji ni nini ah hii vijana leta hii kitu tusaini na karaka you know it was signed there very quickly he signed under the influence i don't know if but but it just go over what you hoped that the Ke- footballers welfare association would become yeah i think uh, first of all like uh, he's talked about it the challenges mm. i also talked about some of the challenges we've been through and uh yeah me today i'm seeing players uh, back to a state where we were maybe 20 years ago 15 years ago 10 years ago mm. players are back to that state and it is very worrying that we are even talking ab- still talking here about the welfare of players that, that 10 years ago you formed an association to yes, change things yes. and it's like you've gone backwards i yes. just want to sorry I, uh, i'm being reminded to take a short break um we're going to take a very short break when okay. we come back i want to see clearly we're not on track but what's the way forward that's what i want to discuss based on what your dreams were 10 years ago what is the way forward now yeah. Yeah. so let's take a short break and then we come into that Hi guys, this is Arnold Lurie, um, here just to try and encourage you guys during these difficult times that the world is facing. Uh, just want to encourage you guys by urging you to keep on keeping a positive mind- mindset uh, by just trying to find something that you can be genuinely grateful for each and every day. You know, for me, that has worked magic. You know, that one little thing that I, that I look forward to each and every day is what has kept me going through every second, through every minute, through every hour, every day and week of this, uh, this, uh, this trying times, guys. Um, like today, just having the health of coming to the gym, uh, even though our season has been halted by the, by the COVID-19, just like any other leagues, coming in the gym, keeping fit, break a sweat, have a good workout, 
It's something that I'm extremely, extremely grateful for. So guys, just find something you can be grateful for. Uh, it, it will help you. It's really important. And as you do that, remember to keep on keeping safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones, uh, your neighbors, your countrymen. Uh, if you can, share the needs that you have with the less fortunate, those who have nothing at all. And uh, also remember, for all your sports entertainment and updates, stay tuned here on Rarud Live. And hopefully, guys, I hope to see you soon. Ciao and God bless. If you know, I like the current uh, Miss Africa Bodybuilding Wellness and uh, also the founder of Val Health and Fitness. And I can tell you, guys, please stay active uh, during this period. It will help you ease out your stress and just make you feel better. If you don't have an equipment, it's okay. You can do this at home, you know, just this. You can do this in the living room, anywhere outside. I'm lucky to have a field behind me so I can always use it, but just get yourself doing something. And also keep it locked because you're watching Radul. Welcome back and thank you for watching Radul Live every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. We are here with uh, Nicholas Muyoti and Bramwell Karamoja. Um, there was a tweet, I, uh, comment I saw earlier, I think it's disappeared, of somebody asking where's uh, Onguso. I think he came in late. Um, we did mention at the top of the show that uh, he sent a text less than an hour to the show saying he is uh, something has come up, he's unable to attend. And then switched his phone off within 30 seconds. Because as soon as I got the text, I tried to call, he was Mteja. And uh, my understanding and my belief and my knowledge of Kenyan sport is that somebody called him when they saw all the advertisements this morning and said, uh, don't go for that show. Because we spoke at 10 a.m. this morning and everything was fine. So uh, that's just to update those of us, who, those of you who joined us a little bit late on uh, where Wesley Ongoso is. But Bramwell Karamoja has ably sat in. I've stepped in. As a former in player. In my shots. Who went through challenges. <laughs> I want to read a few uh, comments here. D. Nick. I don't know how much you've paid this person, uh, Bram. Uh -huh. Bramo Karamoja was a lethal winger at Gorma here. <laughs> there you have it. Bro, uh, there you have it. But it says, it saddens me that he had to quit football so early. Unfortunately, that's the story of many yeah. um, football uh, players in Kenya. If you want to, you have to either choose for the love of the game or putting food on the table. Yeah. And it's so hard because bills don't go away, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Nelly, I'm ignoring your, your, your comment. She says, Bramwell is sitting down as if he's feeling cold. <laughs> um, Killer B shots, says, man. I never blame my parents as much for thwarting my dream as a soccer player, but I understand they wished me well since it was the only way they had, uh, it was the on, it was the only had the hope, something like that. I think our country lacks system to nurture talent, especially in the rural counties. Um, and it is unfortunate when somebody says, my parents just wanted the best for me. Eh? That's why they told me, become a teacher or a lawyer or a journalist as opposed to playing football, which is very, very sad. And then a comment here from uh, Boita Kaloki. I appreciate Muyoti's career progression and would like to see him and the likes using the experience and knowledge uh, in football uh, to bring much needed to bring about much needed, I think, change to football in Kenya. Yes, oh, he continued, he made a typo, then he continued. Um, but Muyoti formed Kenya Footballers Welfare Association. Mm -hmm. For me, that is the biggest effort you can make to try and bring uh, a change. And you were telling us uh, before we went for a break um, what the mandate of KEFWA was, why you had to step aside, and where is KEFWA now? And then a bit later, we'll look what next. So what, what would you have liked to see? Because the last thing I said before we went for the break is that you had this dream 10 years ago, hoping that if someone had asked you where do you want players to be in 2010, it would not be where they are now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, I think, uh, yeah, first of all, um, when we started, eh, um, first of all, I'm very grateful for, to some of the FC Leopards players and the uh, Poster, Ranger play, Poster Rangers players because uh, they were the first ones who started uh, doing contributions so that we could go about uh, the registration money and all that stuff because these players are very happy that uh, they, they, they were part of this dream. It was not only just my dream. They were part of it. But uh, at some point, it used to be very difficult to get uh, 500 shillings from a player every month. Because there are times a player sees you 
and he's like, ah, he's coming for that money. You just see a player ducking. But me, I was focused and I knew what I want to do. So I used to go to them where, lazima ulete pesa yako bana. Eh, lazima tengeneze ikitu. And this is how we, uh, we, we, we continued moving. Because uh, with whatever little we had, we couldn't, we couldn't be able to make it. We had support from here and there. And I'm glad in this journey, there were so many people who came to assist us in this. Like there was Solomon Alubale when we were going for recruitment. Uh, the, the former Wazito. Wazito. See. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He used to give us his car. Guys, go, go, man. Go, go out there. Go do this. Mm -hmm. Without asking for, for us to get the fuel for the car and stuff. Just, just take the car and go. Mm. Through Savior, he really helped helped us, and the, the the other guys who are really willing to support us. So yes, because I remember you told me the initial plan was for members to play, pay a monthly fee. Yes, yes, exactly. There was a registration fee, and yeah. then there was a monthly fee that sort of went into their savings. Yes, but uh, also helped to uh, in your operations. Yes, yes. And I guess that is a challenge when players and, are and, barely and, receiving and, and, money. Yeah, it, it reached a point. Uh, there was a big challenge. It reached a point at Leopards. Eh? I couldn't now ask for money, for money from them, because now when the players paid. see you, they're like they're they 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 But ducking. I'm saying they'd be given yeah. 70 shillings yeah. after a weekend away. No, no yeah. at, 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 some, at some point at Leopards, it was really good. Eh? The time Umias was sponsoring FC Leopards, mm. guys were getting days of salary. Chahonyo. No, Chahonyo? That, no, 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 no. Who was no. The, at the, at the at the time? It was days Magello. of. Uh, this is after just after Magello. We had. Uh, we had who as the, uh, the chairman at that time, FC Leopards. Yeah, after Magelo uh, came in, uh, we had the Kasavuli coming in. Mm. Yes, yes, we yes, had, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, just uh, I can't remember very So those well. were good days. Yeah, there was those, money those, flowing. those were really good days and there was money flowing mm. in the game. And uh, yeah, about after that is when I retired uh, in 2012 and I became a coach. Mm. And uh, yes, at this point, uh, we are moving with Kefwa. Things are very tough mm. and uh, I am happy. I gave uh, Dennis Oliech a call and uh, told him what we were doing. Mm. And through his brothers, Dennis Oliech came to assist Kefwa because mm. uh, we didn't have an office. Dennis Oliech paid for the office mm. and he give, even gave us some money to buy some uh, computers and uh, just uh, the furniture for the office. God bless him. Yes, Dennis Oliech came. I approached other professionals, but... Uh, they were, they were not willing to do it. Mm. But I'm so happy and today, till today I appreciate what Dennis did. Because mm. uh, at some point we didn't, really didn't have money and uh, we need to get, get Kefwa going. And it came in handy for Dennis to come in. And uh, that's after that is when we made him an honorary ambassador for you should for have Kefwa. called me. I had money um, that time, Bana. <laughs> <laughs> I was rich. <laughs> I, I, I gave you guys 35,000 shillings for rent. Mm -hmm. Xavier one day has to tell me what happened. <laughs> I want to ask you, because eh? it's not you I gave. It's Xavier. One day he has to tell me what happened, because a year later you still didn't have an office. No, so. <laughs> but that is not on you. I'll, deal, I'll deal with uh, Xavier on that. But where are we now? Because since you left uh, as chairman yeah. of Kefwa, mm -hmm. you were receiving money from Fifth Pro. Yes. So it reached a point where you said, we, don't, we no longer will be collecting money from players. Because yeah. it's a tough ask yes. on players who barely get their salaries. Yeah. Um, but you, you will now be getting money from Fifth Pro. Yeah. Now, um, Elvis Majani yes. uh, is a sports lawyer. He's the one who introduced Kefwa to Fifth Pro. And uh, after that introduction, uh, we were invited to a congress in Egypt. Um, that was in 2012, at the end of 2012. And uh, I'm happy that uh, we went there. Uh, I went there personally with Elvis. We did our representation, and we, we had planned for it basically beforehand. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, they said uh, after the representation, they, they told us that now you've become observers. Yeah, observers is the first step. Mm. Be uh, there are three steps to Fifth Pro. That is being an observer, a candidate, and then a member. So we were observers. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Fifth Pro observers, you get uh, $50,000. So this is what they give That's you. That's like five year. million. Yeah. No, no, no. Fifty thousand dollars. Ten. No. As observers, you get ten thousand dollars. That's like a meter. That's, That's a million, like a million. A million. Yeah. I yeah. think it was eight hundred thousand, uh, given mm. where the yes, dollar yes, was yes, then. Yes, yes, Given where yeah. the dollar was. Yeah. And uh, basically, this is what we started with. Now, from the other collections we've been getting from players, mm. and 
now we could move. Actually, we moved in almost all the teams, in Premier League teams mm. and some uh, nationwide teams, Super League teams. We were able to move to tell the players about uh, Kefua. We were sensitizing. We could move everywhere and tell the players about it. And uh, yeah, when you come to talk to players in a club, they're very positive about it. But immediately after you leave that place, I don't think they remember anything about Kefua anymore. Very few, I can tell Was it you. targeted? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I oh, have to okay. ask this. But was it then targeted to only the, the male footballers or you were also doing recruitment for the female footballers? We, this is where we started with the male footballers, the okay. Premier League, because mm -hmm. uh, Fifth Pro was specific about it. Mm. That is the, the, the top league in Kenya. Mm. Yeah, and that was at the time uh, we did uh, the women's uh, league, was, uh, it was on and off. Mm. Yeah, so there was not, nothing serious going up on about it. Mm. So th we started with the men only, okay. male football, yeah. So it has to at least work somewhere before you extend it. Before yes, you branch out. Exactly, mm. yeah. So we, we moved around the teams and uh, yeah, I realized even uh, as we were, we, we, we are working hard to make sure we are taking care of the welfare of the player. I think the players themselves, they were not willing to come out. Okay, because I realized there were some cases we were dealing with. Mm -hmm. But a player is sorted and after that, you don't hear again from the player. Mm. Uh, even if anything, I, I cannot even say that I've been held by Kefwa to do this and this. Players disappear like that. And they're quiet. They're so quiet about it. So always at Kefwa, we were always wondering, now, these players, we want to assist them. And they're, they're not willing to come on board. Okay. And even that is why, as interim officials, it took us quite a long time. Okay. Because the response was negative. When Even we are talking to you themselves. like this, it is very positive. Ini kitu poa sana, itas idea, they tell you. But after that, it is over. When you make follow-up, very few of them bought into the idea. Okay. And uh, as much as we tried, we really tried to make sure that uh, we are going to these clubs and talking to them, making them understand. But I also understand where the fear was coming from. Mm -hmm. Players were afraid because if you stand up in a club and talk about uh, any issues, yes, you lose any your issues, position. Mm. Yeah, you you'll be dropped. victimized. Yeah, you're yes. Dropped. So, in other words, club owners, league management, federation management. I, I'm, I'm telling they you, do, they I'm don't telling want you, the players rights, to have power. the rights of the player. It is very difficult just you to come out, and even now, those players who are more experienced are the ones who can talk. Mm -hmm. Those who mm -hmm. their careers are almost and they don't care. Hey, Adam Wesley cancelled today, can. last yeah. minute, in you know very mm. so weird that's circumstances. Why I, to, I, under, I understand it. But yeah. let me ask you, yeah. Nico, Nico, because uh, right now you're in a position whereby you're, you're the, the, the head coach of one of the best teams in, in the country, in Kakamega Homeboys. Yes. You see, the issue of victimization yeah. comes into to, to, to now playtime. Yes. Like, for example, if I speak up and I'm a player, the coach won't play me. Yes. But the coach won't play you because he's been instructed by maybe the team manager or maybe the owner of the club or something like that. You as a coach, yeah. you're in a position whereby your best performing player has spoken his mind. Mm -hmm. Will you feel him or not? My friend. From, issues. You're given instructions from Shimanyula, mm -hmm. who is your boss, yeah. who pays your rent. Mm -hmm. He's told you, we don't want Alan Wanga in the team this weekend because Alan Wanga has come up and said A, B, C, D. Would you play him or not? I think, first of all, I'd look, I look at the situation. Because, eh? mm -hmm. uh, first of all, this beforehand, eh, mm -hmm. I'm training this player the whole week mm -hmm. and I'm preparing psychologically for this game. Yeah. I think I'll talk to Mr. Shimanyula after the game when I fielded the player. After you fielded the after player? The, fielded after the he secured player. the three points. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, cause, because then cause, again cause, you'll cause be I'm telling blamed. You, we are preparing for a match. And whatever it is that you're going to tell, tell me a week before, this player, uh, we are terminating his contract, he cannot go on. That is because okay. The reason but I'm not, not a day before the match or some hours before the match. Because the reason I've asked you uh, that question is because uh, we, had a, we had an incident uh, in our national team, the Starlets, yeah. whereby some players were actually 
uh, offloaded from the team yeah. for speaking their mind. For their, asking their mind. for their allowances. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with such a situation as the coach? I think All it your, is, like, it is, six of your players and, have been... And, 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 and it is very sad because... Mm -hmm. Imagine those players. Eh? Mm -hmm. These are players you've worked out drills with them and you know they're going to play. And last minute you're being told by the Federation. And this is where by most, I'll tell you the truth, most people managing teams in Kenya, they don't know what they're doing. Wow. You see, they just mm -hmm. don't know what they're doing because this is disorienting their coach's plan. I mean, I have a plan. I've already said this. This is what I'm going to do. Mm. These are the players I'm going to use. Mm. And you're doing the drills with them. And then last minute you're telling me six players, and these six players maybe are in first till heaven. Yes. Eh. When you be as as a, as a, as a coach, at times, uta sematu wacha kazi pote. Meski wacha kazi pote, lakini mimi conscience yangu da filda wacha sadi. There's Wamahika Njanga here saying, I think the only way to get away with this mess is to turn these clubs to become professional. But that again is very challenging because our clubs are. They're owned by individuals who, as you say, Shimanyula Sh Sh has the last word at Kakamega Homeboys. Mm. You know, uh, Don Rico has the last word at, uh, Wazito. at Wazito. Whoever owns the club, it's, it's like a personal property. property. And clubs should be owned by uh, societies, by fans, by shareholders, by people who also have a say. Mm. Um, uh, maybe that is one of the solutions. Yeah, I'd be in support of that. I'd be in support of that. Because uh, it's also spoiling our job as coaches. Eh? Mm. Yeah, because uh, maybe you, you want a player for the next season, and maybe his contract is gone, and you still want the player, and maybe the management do not want this player. One person has concerned with the boss. Yeah. Mm. And so, it, it, as a coach, this is a challenge. And you're still planning for the player. So, it means that all your plans are done. Look for another player. In terms of Kefwa Muyoti, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I, don't want to, I just wanted on record that I did invite uh, uh, Jerry Santos, uh, who said he can't come for, he told me amongst others it's his Sabbath. Um, but then he also uh, said he'll find me someone to come and then said nobody is willing to come. Um, so, I just wanted on record that I did invite someone from the current uh, office to come for this show. And one thing Jerry told me, which I laughed, he said, the problem with you, Radul, all you want to know is how much money we get. And he said, that's the problem with players. The minute they get a contract, all they want to know is, how much am I going to earn? And they ignore other important issues. And I told him, you do have a point on that, that players should read their contracts and terms and conditions. But at the end of the day, I need to know how much I'm going to earn. It is one of the most important things on the table when it comes to contracts. So he would not tell me how much money. That's the question I asked Situma on Bram's show. And Situma said, I'm not going to answer that but question. But do you think after what happened on my show, someone from Kefa will be willing to come? Um, they, have <laughs> right of, they have right of ask. I don't want them saying you didn't invite me. <laughs> the very first Radul Live I, I, I hosted, I had uh, Innocent Mutisa on the show. And after the show, I got a text from Situma saying, eh, next time just I would also like to join, you know, mm. the conversation. Yeah. So I want it on record that. They were invited, so nobody says that you're you? talking behind my back. But when you left, based on where Kefwa is now and where Kenya is recognized by Fifth Pro, on a rough estimate, how much money do they receive annually? Do you have an idea? Because you still sit on the exec is it executive board of Kefwa? No, we are trustees. Your trustees. trustees. Yeah. Are you privy to how much money they receive? Mm, not really, because uh, what I can tell you is what I know. Yeah, what, what, what I can tell you is uh, what I know. Because mm -hmm. uh, when we were going to, to Egypt, mm -hmm. we, were, we were told uh, the stages mm -hmm. and uh, the amount received at every stage. stage. Mm. So, what's our, so, observers, we were told you are to receive uh, $10,000. dollars is one million. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. As a candidate, you are to receive uh, $50,000. Five million? Yes. Roughly. And then uh, as uh, full members, mm -hmm. $100,000. Where are we now? We are at full members. We're full members? Yes. So as per what you were briefed in Egypt, Kefa should be receiving 10 million shillings a year. Yes. Which is roughly the figure that uh, I think Ambani, I, I had Boniface Ambani during that uh, Tuchapiani episode where I think... Mm. Um, that is the, the same figure that Ambani gave mm. about. What is that money dollar. supposed to be used for? Okay, basically, first of all, um, those who know about FIFA Pro, mm -hmm. it's not just about players' rights. Yes. Yes, it, there is so much involved in it. And uh, to make these stages to become members, 
these guys must have done very well. Mm-hmm. Maybe at the time they were working together as a group and I know they at some point they, they did that. They were really working together for them to reach membership because mm-hmm. they give you the money and they have to see what you're doing. They audit you, basically. They audit you, they see what you're doing. And if there is any embezzlement of funds, they also have a way to see what, how they're going to do. Because mm-hmm. uh, like uh, na- na- Nigeria had an issue with the embezzlement of funds and uh, they, were, they were scrapped out of, they were thrown out of Fifth Pro. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this um, is where I don't want us to get. You see, if... Um, there is any embezzlement of funds by the officials. I mean, the repercussions are not very good. You see, the repercussions are not good. And we don't want to get there. That is why we're talking about uh, getting a solution. But Nico, speaking about repercussions, yeah. And I, this is not my show. I'm not supposed yes. to be ask, asking you, you questions. Ask. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> wait for my show tomorrow. We need the information. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can have part two. Because I, I, had, I had a lot of intel, yeah. especially after, after that show that I had with the, with the Kefa guys. Yeah. Kefa guys. Yeah. Uh, some people came and actually told me that, Bramwell, you know, this, this fifth pro you're talking about is, is run the same way as the old FIFA. You, you remember the Sepp Blatter's FIFA, mm-hmm. whereby it's just a cartel. When you talk about uh, repercussions because of embe- embe- embezzlement, yes. uh, I don't know if my English is correct, um, some guys were saying that actually it could be that FIFA is also coercing with those member bodies like KEFWA mm-hmm. to embezzle. Mm-hmm. Is it true? Um, I can't tell you about that bit, but I know the bit about uh, FIFA, mm-hmm. the, the corruption that has yeah, been yeah. going on. Yeah. But uh, I've not seen this with FIFA Pro. Mm. Maybe it's something new coming up new, mm. but I've not seen the, we, 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 I've not seen it happening with Fifth Pro. Mm. Maybe if it had started, uh, I don't know. But uh, I believe they have a way. I don't know how they managed to get uh, um, Nigeria. Mm. Um, what was happening there? I don't know how they did that. But mm. uh, what I know is that they have mechanisms that uh, they can do their investigations. It will be under suspension first, and then the next the, stage, the next stage I, comes. I, I know for a but, fact. But the, the biggest challenge here is um, it's not any Dick and Harry who can go to Fifth Pro and tell them that uh, there is a challenge here. It has to come from the members. Mm. It has to come from the members. They don't listen to anybody else. Mm. They listen to the members. If there's a problem with officials, there was a time there was a problem, and uh, we were called in as trustees. I was called from Fifth Pro. What is happening? And uh, I told them, this is the situation. We had a problem, but we're taking care of it. Mm. But have we taken care of it? There's a comment here from Mochiwida. He says, uh, it seems there's something fishy in Kefwa. If you're an office holder, you need to be ready to be asked the hard questions. Positive and negative criticism shall always come your way. I know for a fact uh, we have a con- they have a new constitution that was drafted by, I think, two people. Not even new trustees were aware it was being drafted. I know for a fact uh, that uh, they have two bank accounts that uh, the chairman and vice chairman went and opened a second account that not even the, 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 the treasurer had, was a signatory to. You know, um, uh, I had a very long conversation this morning with my friend Bonnie. There's a lot I know, but I, there's some I, I can't say because it's accusations. And, uh, but as a trustee, are you aware that there are two bank accounts? Is there information being hidden from you by the office holders? I think... Uh I'll be honest with you there mm. and tell you that uh, depending on the proceedings right now mm-hmm. and uh, the feeling about other officials, because uh, they do normally confide in me and mm-hmm. other trustees. There used to be one account, the one that we left, but for some time it hasn't been in use. Mm. So our question was, how are they receiving these funds? So there must be another account, okay, of which I don't know about. But Fifth Pro don't just send money from anywhere. There has to be a There has to be an account, Mm -hmm. yes. Is Is it normal for you as a trustee not to have 
information about your, the account? I think from the time we left office, mm. we are only called when there is a problem. <laughs> but if you, as a trustee, can you ask for the accounts? Can you ask to see them? Or you don't have that? We don't have those powers. I think uh, mm. with, the, with the constitution that we had, mm -hmm. um, we have very limited powers. And uh, we cannot maybe decide, our, we cannot make decisions for the <laughs> management. There's a question here. I know the answer, but I'd like you to answer it. Victor yeah. Odu, he says, uh, the CAFWA officials, are they there for life? I mean, their term is limited. And who elects them? Um, members do elect the officials. We had our last ele elections in 2015, which Motiso won. And uh, yeah, basically the members are the ones who elect officials. How many members are there now? Um, at the moment, I think uh, the, the officials are in a better place to give you that data. When you left, how many members <laughs> were there? <laughs> were, uh, about uh, five, five, 500 and something. 500, isn't that a really low figure considering that on average a club has what, 20, what, three players? 20 or 30 players, by the time you take. include all the players? Yeah. If and, you multiply by the Kenyan Premier League teams alone, and yet uh, Kefwa is supposed to be for all the leagues. No, by now mm -hmm. they should have surpassed that number by a big margin. Mm -hmm. But also, if you look at the number of teams in the league and how many players, just do the match, maybe 30, 30 players per team. Yeah. So. There sh they should be more. Boita here asks, uh, Kefwa should issue audit results to the public by an independent body. This will clear the ambiguities. Boita, they won't even come on this show. <laughs> Let's start there. I don't <laughs> think that's going to happen. Just away from the politics, because I actually don't want to discuss the Jerry's and Situmas, and they're not here to defend themselves. What's the way forward? Because at the end of the day, we have players like Bram quitting football after... Uh, I don't know how many active years, you know. We have players quitting prematurely. We have players getting injuries. We are in COVID is, has created a whole new uh, 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 problem for players. I'm, I'm told there's one club where the chairman has gone to speak to landlords in Eastlands to say, please don't throw out my players. They're not making money. Um, and, and this is a time when Kefwa should actually be walking into the ministry's office and saying, we need your support now because these are strange times. Yeah, I think uh, it is very sad uh, whatever is happening to our players right now. But uh, like you've said, yes, KFO should be knocking those doors. Mm. Yeah, but uh, maybe in some way they're doing it or they're not doing it. They're doing polls on Instagram. Okay, now we need to move forward with KFO. How do we do it? I think from my perspective as a trustee who has been there, and uh, it's very sad that uh, these accusations have come forward. And maybe um, I don't have proof of any accusations, but uh, now that is up to the bodies that are, are mandated to do that. Maybe from Fifth Pro, maybe from the government. This is their job to do that. But uh, what I'd, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd urge and what I'd, uh, I'd uh, request, what I'd demand, whatever it is, what I'm going to use, is that uh, there needs to be there needs to be transparency yeah. in uh, whatever we are doing. Because uh, if we are not tr transparent and that trust is not uh, with the members and uh, also with the public, I think it is very bad. Especially players who are dependent on fans to ask questions for them. Yeah. You see? Because me, at some point, I feel careful by now, should have been owned by the players. Yeah. And they should, they're the ones to be asking the right questions. Because they're if, the biggest yes, stakeholders. Yes, they're the, yeah. they're, they're the ones to be asking these questions. Mm. If there, fact, there's any mismanagement of funds, if the, the constitution has been changed without their, 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 their knowledge, they should be the ones asking these questions, not funds out there. Funds have stood for players for so long, and I've not seen players standing for funds. To look leopards, we have a problem. Funds come in and changado. Mm. But funds get a problem, Players have their money, they cannot changa for that fund. So Who players need problem? to step up. No, as players, players, need to step players up. really need to step up and ask the questions. Ask for accountability from KEFWA. Because even the officials of KEFWA, and this is why the, the, an election was even due, officials of KEFWA are supposed to be active players. And right now, is, isn't that how you made it? They should be active players. First of all, <laughs> mm. in 2015, <laughs> there was a problem with the federation. And uh, that is the time 
players stood up and they said no. And we called these players. Some of them, I'm sorry to say, they just know about Kefwa, but they didn't want to come to Kefwa for their own reasons. Mm -hmm. And that is the time we said, now, let these players take charge. They are ready to do what? Little did we know that these guys are not ready to take up the mandate. You see? Because at that point, we were sure now these players have come back, come out, because most of us had already made the transition to either management or coaching. Mm -hmm. We were there. And it was always bringing a conflict of interest. That is where I was actually, I, I wanted to really ask you this question, uh, Muyoti. Uh, in most this, uh, football forums where, where, where we are yes. members, you'll, you'll hear people talking about, you know, giving former players, ex-footballers, the mandate to run football in the country. But if we don't want to be accountable enough, how are we going to be trusted with, say, the national office? It's unfortunate. Um, and also to me that is a big question mark. Because uh, what I can tell you is that mm -hmm. part of among the reasons why we formed care for it's to prepare for leadership for the federation, for the clubs. Okay, that is part of it. But if we cannot be entrusted mm. with uh, a responsibility like managing care for, mm. then Definitely, it will bring the question marks. Mm. It will bring them. Bram, let me ask you, yes. as a former player, what would be an ideal situation that you would want a body like Kefwa to have done for you, assuming you are playing now? What would you want Kefwa to do for you as a player? Which probably current players can't even say because they're being silenced. Um... <laughs> What would be an ideal situation? Because we look the, abroad, the ideal, look how footballers the, live the, abroad. The ideal situation, mm. and I don't know if those players abroad really depend on, on, on Kefwa. Um, um, I mean, on their Kefwa. <laughs> I don't even know if no, they're No, Kefwa no, no. In exists. fact, the funds uh, that Kefwa is getting eh, mm. is from those players, professional players. Because, you see, uh, I was talking to, I managed to be with Denis Oliech. You see, when Denis Oliech left France to start coming back, he came to Dubai. He came to play to, uh, in Dubai for a team called Dubai FC. And one thing Dennis told me is that the moment he signed for, was it Nantes? The moment he signed for as a professional footballer in yeah. France, mm -hmm. immediately there's part of, part of his salary. By default. By default. Yeah. Part of his salary used to go to a welfare. When Dennis left France, because that money is like an investment you're making. Yeah. When he left France, he was legible to ask for that money. And that money was in excess of almost 100 million. We are talking about 2015. So how, how many seasons did Dennis play in, uh, in France? I don't know, about I four, was, three, four. That, long is, around, that yeah. is the ideal scenario. That is what I would want Kefa to do for it's me as a former player. Fun. As a player, as an active player. I have an injury. My club has neglected me. Do I pay Kefwa? Yes, I do. A monthly contribution, a quarterly, yearly, whatever it is. When I get an injury, or right now we have COVID times, I can go to KFO and even take a loan. KFO can come and, and step in to pay rent for some people. You know, we have so many players out in these streets who don't even have food. They can't have, afford basic things like even transport. I don't know why Onguso hasn't come. Maybe he didn't even have transport. Yeah, have you no, asked he, him? I don't we, know. We discussed it. And, uh... <laughs> you know, so the ideal situation for me will be careful stepping in for me in terms of need. In terms of need will be things like maybe I'm injured. My wife needs money to go and maybe have a surgery or deliver. You know, hmm. come in and rescue me. Not come in and put me in a worse situation than I was. No, I think, uh, Carol, I like how he's put it. Eh? But now, Kefua needs a different approach. You mm. see, like now what Onguso is doing. Kefua needs to support you as a player to start your own business. Okay, mm. as opposed to running to them in times maybe when I but have an stories, injury. But there are stories. Okay. Is it to start your own business or to prepare you? You see, the ideal situation, and yes. I asked Bram what would be an ideal situation for him, 
if I was a player, my yeah. ideal situation was for that football to pay all my bills. Yes. So that, yes, I can have investments, but not to take my time. You see, like, Onguso has to go and operate his own operate border his own at some border, point. Border. Yeah. As a footballer, it would be so good if they could be fully professional. They wake up, they train, they're shown what to eat, they sleep on schedule, you know, yeah. because football pays their bills. Mm -hmm. Of course, they don't. Mm -hmm. But, so here, uh, players need side hustles yes. to make ends meet. Yeah. Bram was operated a cyber you, you worked yeah. as a cyber assistant mm. and all that so it's it's i think careful should prepare you for life after football and that's one of the things we discussed with you 10 years ago yes that how how do you tell them this career is so short-lived eh? yeah either you retire when you're 35 or you get an injury at 25 yes so you always have to be ready for what next but so as a player i would say what programs do you have where you're you're, you're, you're coaching me mm telling me how to save, telling me how to invest, yeah. looking at my, telling me, bring your pay slip and I work with you. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you, give me 500 bob a month yeah. when your salary is 15, mm -hmm. your rent is seven, you have school fees and, and a mother to look after. Yeah. And I'm asking you for 500. Maybe you can't, maybe you can only do 200. Yeah. So work with and probably make a case with five, 10 players mm -hmm. so that other players get trust. Because what I'm hearing is also there's a lack of trust of Kefwa from the player side. Sorry, I'm talking too much. Um, <laughs> Radul, maybe just uh, what you've been saying. Eh? Kefwa is putting up programs. Mm. You see, like uh, the trainings, they are also um, doing partnership with the universities. But who is going to these trainings? Mm. Who is going to these universities? Mm. Apparently, players are not doing that. Mm. And these ones are scholarships, which probably are fully paid. And also, fifth pro is doing scholarships for players who are playing and maybe some players who have just uh, finished playing. There are programs there, but it needs players to show the interest that they want this. Yeah. Yeah. Pro prob know. Probably uh, Kefa also has a communication problem. How are they selling this idea to the players? You know? I think and, and I wish uh, Nguso had come because yeah. as an active player, mm. I could have asked, have you been sold? What idea have you been sold by Kefwa? Mm. Because someone has put your quote here, Obimbo would achieve. Fans have stood up for players for so long, it's now time for players to stand up for fans. Nicholas Muyoti, 2020. But, so, uh, in, but in, yeah. uh, if just to, re to, to respond to, to that comment, um, I happen to be on so many football groups, and uh, I don't know what they mean by players standing also for the fans, because I have so many football friends who have also stood up for the fans. The other day I was doing my show and I had some uh, ex-convicts. Uh, I had Teddy M. Rogers and Shoaib Mohammed, And I had so many players stepping in uh, to actually offer paying rent for some of those guys. I had Marcelo who actually sent me his contribution. We have so many times seen Patrick Matasi stepping up for these players and so many others. So I, I, I don't know what... I, I think mm. footballers standing up for fans is not in that aspect. Mm. The way I understood it is that Fans are complaining about Kefwa. Why are footballers not complaining about Kefwa? Mm. Fans are complaining about what happens to the gate. We had, uh, I had Rachiaru sit on this seat and tell me that Gorma here has 500 registered fans and it's 1,200 shillings a year. And when I asked the fans, I told them, shame on you, all the noise you make. They said, we give them our money to do what? We don't know what they're doing with our money. Mm. We pay at the gate. We don't know where that money goes. So it's fans complaining about where the gate money goes as opposed to players standing up and saying, where does the gate money mm -hmm. go? So stand up for players mm -hmm. in that aspect, as in the fans are the ones with the urgency. We seem to have more urgency than the players themselves to see football work. So we are solving the problem from yeah. outside coming inside instead, instead of the other of inside, way around. Yeah. Uh -huh. But how do, how, how do players come out, a team like Gormaya? Mm. Now you're coming out maybe, uh, maybe uh, and you're just bound to be victimized. Like Bro. most most of us have been victimized. Today we've we've been suspended. We go to Uganda to play football. Muyoti. It's, and it's, you're coming it's, back it's here for a release. You cannot be given a release. You know, a revolution has to go with so many people. Mm -hmm. And today I was mm -hmm. actually the telling words out of my mouth. I was actually <laughs> telling someone today yeah. that it has reached a point. You know, we are at the end of the rope. Mm -hmm. Right now, where it has reached, if that victimization will put me out of the team, let that victimization carry us all. Let if, me, somebody if, has to say, I'm going to make it better for the next generation. If is not going to honor a fixture because Alan Wanga said we are not being played, then the whole team doesn't go for the game. Bring other players, we are not going. Bramwell, 
And that should be the power of Kefua. If they say, guys, they're victimizing these players, we are not going to play the leagues. Mm -hmm. And this is what I saw in India. When that, at that time, there was a guy called Baichung Butia. He was the chairman of the Players Pamso Union. will pronounce that name properly. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a problem, he says, no, we are not going into the pitch. And the guys, they stay at home. Mm -hmm. like Until you whatever see the problem. power our Atuoli. friend Atuoli has. Mm. He says, stay home, they stay home. Look at teachers. Don't go to class, don't go to class. Mm. You know. We need Kefua to get there. When it comes to the players, it's like a dog that's been hit. <laughs> You know, uh, unfortunately, you will replace Wanga's team, and the other team will come and play. Yeah, someone else will come. But it is so sad. A lot of these, a lot of these young men, eh, right now, they are they are just beginning their career, and don't don't expect them to stand up. Ochiwida here, he's asked a question which I know the answer, but I'll let you answer, Bram. He says, Karamoja, Bram, you've forgotten again. Today, you are a player, not the moderator. Were you also a member of Kefua? Ochiwida. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, by the time Kefa was starting, I was not even in this country. As you said, yeah. Kefa started in 2011. 2011. I got my first passport in 2009. And I got that passport because Pamzo wanted to take me to India that season. I, was, I had done so well for Gormaya, Pamzo wanted to take me to India. You let him yak as Viking Fisher, whatever it was. Yes, Bengal. East Bengal. So I got, that is the first time I got my passport. Flew out of the, uh, when the India move didn't happen, I decided to to, to go to Dubai, so I wasn't around when Kefa started. There's a so comment here I need to that. address. Gabriel T. Tito, he said, Radul, would you have covered for what Onguso would have earned today? Because it's as if you're criticizing him for not showing up. Several things, Gabriel. I invited him on to the show. He confirmed he would come. I spoke to him at 10 a.m. this morning. He confirmed he would come. I told him I would need you for about two or three hours. How much is that in terms of your, uh, your earnings? I will give it back to you. I didn't want that to come out, but you're asking me, would you have covered for him? I actually told him I would have covered for him, which is why it's really strange that he didn't turn up today because I cannot take him away from his border border business and not make sure he has food to go home with tonight. So, yeah, just, that's just for a clarification. Uh, Victor Odu says, exactly, Carol Kefwa should prepare all about life after football. Lack of accountability is a key problem. Kevin Oswero, uh, the, Oswere, sorry, the show is informative. Um, Irene Wangare says, Radul, I look at some of my friends' life after football, it is sad. And that's so unfortunate. We almost have to wrap because we've been going on for more than an hour. Um, I didn't even get to talk to you about Kakamega Homeboys and whether you think you should have won the league this season. But you can quickly answer that. Um, I think we, we were going for the league. You were Absolutely. Going, for the league. Yeah, we were Absolutely. going for the league? Absolutely. Do you think it should have been allowed to continue? Um, not under the circumstances. Okay. Yeah. And yet we have uh, leagues in Europe that continued. Um, they managed to figure uh, away. I mean, it, it, it's quite different here and the mm. situation here. We don't have the resources to yeah, mass yeah. test and I mean, protect. if you look at most of the teams, the, mm. the, 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 the financial situation is quite bad. But it's, uh, and the other day, Bram did a show on, on the Tanzanian league. Tanzania continued theirs. Mm -hmm. And it's quite unfortunate that uh, right next door they have the capability okay they're not taking COVID. I think, as we yeah, are, from the onset they are not taking COVID but serious. they are able to continue mm -hmm. with football i don't mm -hmm. know what the repercussions might be they may mm -hmm. be very grave so yeah, I, w yeah. I won't yet praise them for that move but it's unfortunate because yes kakamega homeboys were going for the title this mm -hmm. season yeah. um but next season what are your plans um basically this is a a program i have for three years for kakamega homeboys and apparently this was coming sooner than expected because I, I believed the third year is when we were going for the title. But uh, I thank my boys and the work they've done, the management, the support they've given us, the county government. I think uh, we are on track. I think if we do another season like that, like last season, I believe we can make it. All right. Well, I wish you all the best. Um, I'm going to allow you each to have your party short. Bram, maybe what you would like to see Kefwa do... Um, I don't think the current office is going to speak to any other, <laughs> any of us, um, anytime soon. But um, I'm going to come to you as well, uh, Muyoti. As a player, what would you have wanted, Bram? I think uh, the key word here is just transparency. Um, that is what uh, is lacking uh, in CAFO's management um, from even the previous office to this office. 
and then let's just remove greed from it. Um, he was in the previous office I, and he I, had, I, I don't he had know, the accountability. I don't know the motive behind also those people who are calling for the elections. Because uh, is it because now there's uh, $100,000 you've said? What is the motive behind it? Because at the end of the day, I think the players should win. Actually, that's a good point because, I mean, elections are due, but are people coming in because they've seen the amount of money that they mm. are likely to handle? You know, I mean, I had Nyamwea sit here and he told me that they were given $240 million by the government and immediately the comments were like, oh, so you want to manage <laughs> <laughs> that money? Um, Coach, what is before, your before you pa you're, you're parting short, next time you're asked, what are your plans? Your plans are seated right in front of you. Just sign me. And we have this thing. Oh, <laughs> I, saw, I saw a comment here from your friend Cynthia Lisa. She said they can do with your prowess. Hey. At Kakamega <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> prowess. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, on a serious note, back to Kefwa. <laughs> <laughs> Bram, I think your your retirement age. Eh? <laughs> back to Kefwa. Um, what would you like to see happen at Kefwa? Yeah, I think. Uh, from my point uh, of perspective, eh, I'd like, uh, first of all, the members to stand up. I want members to stand up because uh, it has reached a time that uh, KFO has been here for quite a long time. And uh, that trust should be there by now that uh, in case we stand up, can KFO uh, be with us? Is KFO fighting for us? I think. Uh, that is what I'd urge. And uh, also, like he said, transparency is very important. We, we also had issues. But uh, I think the way we worked in Kefua mm. was quite different. Because uh, whatever it is that came in was uh, discussed on the table. And uh, whatever money was used and whatever... Um, it was more public than now. No, we, 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 we had our plans, mm. and uh, everybody would know this amount of money is coming in, and uh, this is how it has been used. And if there was any uh, question marks about uh, our transparency, I think uh, I'm the one who was uh, the chairman, and I should be the one to be responsible. There's, there's a time that. you used to send me records. Mm -hmm. You used to s even send me names. These players mm -hmm. have registered. These players have paid. This money has come in. Yes, You've exactly. used this for the registration. Yeah. But you know? at the moment, we have these challenges. the current office, it's yeah. not a challenge. They this, failed. Sorry. Mm -hmm. These challenges have <laughs> come up. <laughs> and uh, KFO needs to address these challenges. I have to say the truth. What, what can we do, Nick? Because I, I like to leave every show with something we can actually do. And I love the word appeal, but where we are now, it will fall on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. Is there any redress you can take as a trustee and your fellow trustees to first of all, sort out the constitution issue, get us elections, and get people we believe are credible I to think, run the I association? Think first of all, I'd lie to you if I'd say we run to elections. Are mm. they the solutions? Is it the solution to run to elections? I think somebody else might come and even do worse than maybe whatever is happening. Or do better. Or do better. But what I'm saying is that I think all these years we've been, uh, we've been here and Kefo has been with us, there have been problems. And uh, yeah, officials are complaining. Maybe members are complaining. But what we need to do is find out where did it start leaking. And uh, basically, if there are issues of uh, finance, do we have a treasurer who can be account for this money? Maybe at the moment we don't have a treasurer. But why we don't have we treasurer. have a treasurer? He only has access to there the is. bank account where no transactions which, happen. Which, uh, you see, I think... Uh, you know, elections were due. See, elections were due. Yes, yes, they were due. So let's just have elections by the due fact that they were due. So it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. The current office have shown us they're not willing to, to answer questions. You know, I don't know. Nobody knows exactly what is being hidden, but the fact that they refuse to answer questions, something is being hidden. So the fact that elections were due, we'd rather even see if there's a way to get an interim office because we need to get this thing back on track. Yes, Every day we waste, players are going through more and more problems. Mm. Clubs are mistreating their... I saw a contract for a KPL player. It's a page and a half. 
And I'm like, okay, so this is the brief. Where's the full contract? No, 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 that's it. It's a page and a half. And the second page, you just put your signature. I'm told players are even given the second page and told sign. All they know in the first page is how much. The details are left. It's like we're taking these players for fools, you know? And, uh, and, and this you, needs to stop. Did you, did you see what, is written, what was written on top of the contract? Because some of the contracts are written on players' contact. Not even contract. Not even contract. Yes. <laughs> it's not a typo. No. <laughs> and this is still happening. Players' contact. It's still happening And when there is a case, a player uh, uh, brings for you a contract, and you're like, this is not a contract. It's written players' contact. So, so where, where are you going contact. with that case? That's what I'm saying, Miyoti. Mm. Uh, since this current office is not sorting out these issues and elections were due, something tangible needs to happen. We're not going to de decide now. I have no say. You're a trustee. I don't know what power that gives you, if any. Um, I like to think since Fifth Pro know you exist. I don't know who can who can progress things so that this so our players start to get looked after. I think as at now. Uh Already, uh, KFO has agreed to do elections, which are long overdue. Mm -hmm. That one I can tell you for sure. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, I can tell you is that uh, I'm not sure if they're going to use the previous contract uh, or, constitution. or the previous constitution or well, the one that was drafted the by one two that people. Was drafted. That one I don't know. I can mm -hmm. tell you for sure. But about elections, I think uh, they've, they've said that uh, they will immediately after this COVID-19 issue, they're going to do the elections. Uh, what we need to know is that uh, what constitution are they going to use so that uh, we know, and do the members know uh, the, 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 the nitty gritties in the constitution? Okay, and because uh, in the previous constitution, mm -hmm. there's a process that needed to be followed for them to have a new constitution. And that process of which was not I followed. think maybe that process wasn't followed. But now uh, maybe we'll, we'll have to go back there so that we can see what went wrong, what didn't happen, and then we can move ahead from there. My head is spinning. My head is spinning. But uh, thanks. Thanks, Muyoti, for coming. Thank you so much. Uh, Bramwell Karamoja, thank you for stepping in. Yep. Uh, Personally, I won't shut up anytime soon, <laughs> but things need to get better for our players, man. Those are the guys who wake up at 4 or 5 in the morning, sweat for us. When they lose, we abuse them. When they win, we love them. But at, and at the end of the day, they go home hungry. It's not right. It's not right. Something needs to happen. Guys, thanks for watching, man. We'll see how to take this conversation forward. I'll try and see. I've seen halfway through the show, Wesley's phone came on. I saw my text go through. But uh, I don't know what happened. I'll try and find out exactly what happened. Conveniently, once the show was supposed to be over at 3. But uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, see you again next week on Radu Live. Thank you.